IHG is posting a profit as more people begin to book hotels. The latest earnings show the multi-speed recovery for travel in full swing. IHG says demand is strongest in China and the US isn't far behind. The shares were off more than half a percent, but really not much to talk about. IHG oversees 16 brands. That's Holiday Inn, Crown Plaza and, of course, uh, the namesake Intercontinental Hotels. I spoke to the chief executive earlier. Keith Barr told me the company is making great headway in its pandemic recovery. We have really seen um, our focus on growth pay off. Uh, you know, we saw again, U.S. has been accelerating. China is back to normal. And we've seen quite a bit of demand happening across Southern Asia into the Middle East. Europe has been a bit slower. And so the question is, how will those markets recover in terms of growth? So I would say more about our focus is around markets right now where we're seeing development activity really kind of gear up which is also why we're launching a new brand we've announced in the next three weeks to tap into that luxury lifestyle collection space does the guest truly distinguish between the minutiae of the middle brands yes you've got uh, six senses and Intercon at the top and you've got Holiday Inn at the bottom and you've got or in the middle or whatever and they're the big names but the moment you start mentioning all the others are does people really honestly do they know what they stand for I think when you go brands like Holiday Inn Express um 30 years 3,000 hotels known for that these are younger brands right so I mean we only have 200 Avids open in the pipeline and so you know my aspiration is that Avid is going to be the next Holiday Inn Express for IHG and it is a different experience and a different price point than a Holiday Inn Express and customers see that and in Atwell Suites but most of this is going to be about price points and experiences and then building up those small differentiators from a brand perspective that meet customer needs too. And so, but it's about scale. At the end of the day, you have to become big, have scale for customers to really know what the brands stand for in that segment. I'm curious, talk me through the CEO thinking about whether or not to mandate and say, you have to be vaccinated if you want this job, assuming it's legal in the country we're talking about. So let's take the United States, where in most cases it would be legal to do that. What is your thinking about why are you hesitant from doing, for example, what the mayor of New York has done or the governor of California has done? Why are you hesitant? We have a fairly ethnically diverse frontline workforce, and there's a lot of vaccine hesitancy in some of those communities. And we're we're afraid of actually being discriminating about employing those individuals in an environment where we're struggling to find staff. I think if you're in the hospitality, travel, tourism, services sector right now, we're having a real hard time finding staff because people left this industry. Demand has come back faster than we expected. And we're trying to draw people back into the industry and trying to remove those hurdles. And candidly, we have great COVID operating protocols from screens and masks and social distancing that we operate in a very, very safe environment. But it is one of the real challenges, Richard. And I don't deny it. That's something that we continually debate week in and week out right now. Your own travels. I'm surprised you've just taken your first trip. Uh, it, it, first business trip. First, yeah. business trip. first business trip. First business trip. How was it? Where did you go? How was it? I uh, left the UK, went to Atlanta, then to Salt Lake City, and then Los Angeles, and then back to the UK. Um, a lot more paperwork. Uh, a lot more COVID tests. Uh, I'll be amazed if I have a nose left at the end of all of this. Um, um, when I landed in the US, I was amazed at how busy the airports were. Having left the UK where international travel has been quite restricted and you feel sometimes like I have a movie walking into the airport and there's no one there, to landing into Atlanta Hartsfield or into Salt Lake City or LAX, and the, the business was just booming, right? The planes were full and people were traveling, which was great to see. And it was business as well. There were people with rollerboards and briefcases on there as much as rucksacks with kids going on holiday. And um, So that gives me confidence about what the future of this industry holds because we're seeing it when the vaccine rates are like that in the US. Has, have you changed your view on the percentage of business travel that will come back? Do you think more will now come back than we first thought? The internal meeting, the daily trip's gone. I accept that. But the business trip, do you feel you know, talk of its death is greatly exaggerated, as they say. I, I, I completely agree. And it, it made me realize what we were missing. And I think when you don't have it, you don't maybe realize it until you have that connection again. And, and the, the example that I was using is 
video is very transactional and that works for some things, right? It's sort of, you know, we have to have a conversation to get something done, but it's pretty hard to build a relationship or convince an owner to go build a $200 million hotel when the only time you've ever met is over a Zoom call or a Teams meeting or on Skype. And so I think more business will come back um, and particularly as vaccination rates continue to go up and countries begin to reopen up travel quarters and making it easier because they're just feeling their way through it now, right? My, my first leisure trip was to Spain, five COVID tests, painful, right? To go through that experience. Now my last test was two COVIDs. So getting better pretty soon, I'm hoping to have no COVID tests, but the easier it gets, I think the, the more business travel will see come back. The CEO of IHG talking to me.